precipitation totals across much of the central portion of the United States this summer have not only caused drought conditions in multiple states, but have also led to a smaller and weaker Mississippi River. As a result, salt water from the Gulf of Mexico that is normally held back by the force of the Mississippi River is now slowly making its way up the river, causing significant threats to communities in South Louisiana and their drinking water. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and emergency officials in South Louisiana are responding to the emergency and are rated by the experience and expertise of engineers and scientists at the U.S. Army Engineer Research and Development Center, or ERDIC. That expertise dates back decades and includes the ability to model saltwater movements and a critical understanding of the physics behind saltwater intrusion and the dynamics of mitigation efforts, such as developing a sill or underwater dam to slow the salt water. So there's salt water intruding from the Gulf of Mexico up the river. And as that salt, wa as that salt water approaches the water surface, it approaches the drinking water intakes. Um, and salt is not something that you can uh, conventionally deal with, uh, with drinking water filtration. You can't filter it out of the water and also it corrodes the pipes. So it prevents them from being able to use the drinking water. They're gonna to have to either bring in bottled water or bring in water from upstream or other resources, which all of which are being uh, uh, mobilized currently. When uh, fluids of different densities encounter each other, uh, which in, and in this case, salt water is, is more dense than fresh water, they tend, there tend not, tends not to be mixing between the fluids. They tend to, to stratify. So what happens is the fresh water flows over the salt water and the salt water flows under the fresh water. Um, the bottom of the Mississippi River, the bed of the river is actually much lower than the Gulf of Mexico, well upstream. So the salt water, if there's not enough fresh water to, to apply pressure to keep the salt water in the Gulf of Mexico, then it slowly migrates upstream. Uh, currently, there is a very low river uh, conditions right now that the flow of the Mississippi River is very low and has been for a long time. So salt water has been steadily migrating upstream against the current along the riverbed. And it, as long as those low river conditions persist, then that, that upstream migration will persist. We have much understanding of the basic physics of, of saltwater wedges. A lot of that pioneering research was done right here at Erdic. Uh, Garbus Cooligan was one of the first people to develop that work and he did a lot of the, the theoretical work of salt wedges and what's called an arrested sailing wedge uh, when, when the, the forces are in equilibrium. Uh, and then a lot also there was a lot of the er early uh, physical and numerical modeling of salt wedges was developed here as well as the original design of the, uh, the saltwater uh, wedge sill to prevent the sill that helps to prevent the upstream migration which has already been built that design was done here at Erdic in conjunction with the new orleans district uh, by several researchers uh, billy johnson and bill mcanally among them in the in the 80s so uh, there's a lot of work that's been done and we we so we understand the fundamentals of it very well um, and we also bring to bear a lot of the um, knowledge of stratified flows from atmospheric physics and various other things. But the model that we're using right now is more of a tool uh, that we've developed, which is a somewhat simplified tool where we basically have a what's called the laterally averaged model of the river width averaged, but we have two layers in the model. There's a freshwater layer and a saltwater layer, and they interact. The physics of the interaction at the interface is dictated by our understanding of the, the basic physics that I described earlier. The reason we're using that is because it is this is an emergency operations. We want to do a really quick turnaround and we want to be able to just do a lot of assessments, uh, not only of the of what may happen in the future, but also what some of our interventions, some of the interventions that we're imposing uh, may um, what their effects may be. And so this is a tool we can run very rapidly and do quick assessments with. And since it's emergency operations, we're using it daily in conjunction with the New Orleans district to sort of make decisions on the fly. In the 1980s, when there was there was an authorized deepening of the Mississippi River uh, where, where the Corps was going to authorize the deepening, and there had to be associated with that, there was a mitigation measure that was put in place to uh, mitigate the additional, the, the assumed additional salinity intrusion that will result from that. And that mitigation measure is to basically build uh, what is essentially a, um, a dam, an underwater dam in the river and build it out of sand. 
we just basically pour sand in a mound in the river. And so when the salt is coming upstream, you, you imagine it's sort of like water filling a reservoir. We have a, a dam down there, and so the salt has to fill the space in that reservoir and over to, before it can overtop that dam. So it's a delaying tactic uh, that enables us to delay the ingress of the, of the salt wedge. Um, and then it's it's a very clever uh, development that they did because it, it it's a self-cleansing uh, dam. When the, when the river rises, it just scours away. Um, one of the things we've done in conjunction with the New Orleans District is to um, help design an augmentation to that dam for the particular emergency we have now. Because the dam, that dam, that sill has already been overtopped by the current ingress of the salt wedge. So what we've done, we, we wanted to elevate that dam as much as possible to mitigate further intrusion, but we had two constraints. One is we have to allow navigation in the river so we can't elevate the dam above the, 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 the draft of the vessels. And the other is if we elevated the dam too far, um, it would scour away. It, it would just be too shallow and the velocity would scour. So what we've done is, and you'll hear this talked about in the news, we've created a notch, a notch to dam, which is what's being built right now. There's a low section that the vessels can go through, and then the rest of the, the dam has been elevated up to uh, about uh, 30 feet below the water surface. Uh, the notch is at about 55, and the rest of the dam will be about 30 feet. And that's our optimization of those parameters. And and we worked with the New Orleans, New Orleans District to to design that that augmentation. We owe a lot of our knowledge of, of the salt wedge and, and salt dynamics to a lot of work that has been done here at Erdic over the years and over by many different people. And uh, so that that's been very helpful in this in uh, addressing this emergency. But also. Uh, we want to take into account that we, you know, we are working very hard with the district to try to mitigate this as much as possible because we recognize that this is a, a serious situation for a, a lot of people in, uh, in the New Orleans area and downstream in New Orleans.